All right, let's start with uh, some of the obvious. Let me scroll down here. So it's real simple, right? Like the, the, you got like a goal prop, you got a, a point prop, a higher or lower, All right? Makes sense. We don't have to overthink this. I'm going to start with uh, Brad Marchand of the Boston Bruins. His point total is 70 and a half. Uh, I am going to go lower here. Let me pull up Brad Marchand's stat page here. So, like, Brad, here's the thing. Congrats on becoming the captain, right? We'll give him, let me pull the soundboard out, round of applause, okay? Good for him, everything like that. Brad Marchand is 35, by the way, okay? He's 35 years old. He had double hip surgery, not this summer, last summer. So, I don't know if 70 points is realistic for him. It, so the Boston Bruins in their best season in like statistically in forever, he had 67 points in 73 games. If he plays all 82, that is over 70 points, right? That makes sense. I do not believe that Brad Marchand will play every game this year. I believe injuries may catch up to him. Uh, and I just I don't think the Boston Bruins are a very good team. They're not. I I said this on Better Hockey Now. I even think they missed the playoffs. That's how far I'll go, right? And it's it's crazy to think about it because they finished like 135 points, right? But part of me really does believe that this team could miss the playoffs. They have like their center depth is not good. Like they will feel no Brad Marchand in their lineup. They're going to, uh, sorry, uh, no Patrice Bergeron in their lineup. They will feel it. So I don't know if they'll be able to overcome that. They also like, say what you want about Gareth Hathaway and Dimitri Orloff. And when they came over, they played well, at least, right? They did a lot of good things. And then you have the loss, again, depth guys, Nick Foligno, uh, you know, Taylor Hall. I know these guys are not, but they're still NHL players and you don't have them there. And like Pavel Zaka is your top centerman now. This is this is not a good, it's just not good in Boston. It's not going to be well, or at least it's not going to be good for Brad Marchand. I'm not expecting him to score over 70 points. I'm not. I think he can flirt with 60. I really do. I don't think 70 is in the cards for him. I really don't. So I'm going to go with the lower there. Let's keep going down a little bit here. Okay. So now we've tucked in on him. Uh, da, 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 da. Carter Bedard, everybody's favorite child. Um, look, Carter Bedard is a special talent. He really is. Uh, I'm going to take the higher on 30 and a half goals. I think the 69 and a half point total is a little rich. And to me, the player that I compare him to closest in terms of shot wise, in terms of shooting, like, we know that Bedard can shoot. He can facilitate the puck as well. He's a great passer. So I think if if the reason he doesn't hit 30 goals is because he's dished out 60 assists. I don't know who's scoring, but Connor Bedard is going to be able to do things that a lot of other players can't do. I think his shot is comparable to Austin Matthews in, in that it is quick, it is efficient, it is like it's deceptive. It's everything you love in a goal scorer. So I think, it, and in in Matthew's first year, he scored forty goals, right? So if 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 I think Connor Bedard can score goals, which I do, I, I I truly do. I understand it's hard for rookies to have success in the NHL. He is by far the favorite to win Rookie of the Year, and there's a reason for it. So I know Chicago's a bad team. I like the upside here on Connor Bedard. So I will take the over 30 and a half goals here. I just think he is, he is that. He is legit. He is him, right? Uh, next here, I don't have to go very far. Cole Caulfield, over 32 and a half. Um, because I waited, I, I knew I wanted to do something like this for this type of stream. This opened at 30 and a half, if I'm not mistaken. And I think it's been adjusted a little bit, or I've seen 30 and a half in other places. 32 and a half is fine for Cole Caulfield. Let me put this into, into, you know, context here a little bit. Okay. 
Um, let me just pull that there. So he is, he is good. He is, he is elite. Let me, I'm trying to find, um, okay. That is our, okay. So Cole Caulfield, here he is. He is, he has suffered some injuries in the last couple of years. I get that. Okay. I truly, truly get that. However, he had 26 goals in 46 games last season. Okay. I'm going to pull up the calculator here so I can do some math. Okay. We're going to do some math here. Okay. I know you, I know. Look. We got to do some math together, okay? So if I want to put 26 goals in 46 games on an 82-game pace, okay? If I want to do that, so 26, 82, divided by 46, okay? That's a 46-goal pace. Now, am I saying that he's scoring 46 goals this year? No. Do I think he can flirt with 40? Absolutely. Do I think he can go over 32 and a half? Yes. That is just on last year, right? And I know some people are going to say, oh, but maybe he was injury prone to this and that. Like he took, from my understanding for him, his shoulder was, it needed work. And the Montreal Canadiens were going nowhere. So what did they do? They said, hey, this is a lost season. Go get your shoulder fixed. You have all summer to rehab, right? Not, not even. You have all the second half of the season to rehab. You have the whole summer to go through your natural training process and whatever you want to do, coming to camp bigger, stronger, faster, and everything else. And then now he can score. Like, who else is scoring goals? If Montreal could get a power play that worked and look decent, then he would probably flirt with 50 goals. But we're not there yet. We're just not there yet for Cole, right? And he's 22 years old, okay? Okay. So let's pump the brakes here. I know a lot of people want to say, oh, Montreal doesn't have really an elite goal scorer. Hold on, okay? He's here. Give him a moment, okay? I I do. I don't. 46 is, is quite something. But if that's the pace that he was on last season, then why would he not score over 32 then? I, I just feel like that one's a mismatch. I do. I truly feel like that's a mismatch. So I will take the over 32 and a half here uh, easy. Okay, let's go down a little bit. Uh, these next two are going to be goalies uh, because, you know, we got to get the fun into this. We've already spoken about him. You already know I'm a big fan of him. Obviously, Devin Levi. Okay, now think about this for a second. Okay, the Buffalo Sabres missed the playoffs by a single point last season. And they employed Craig Anderson, okay, for the entire year. Okay. I just want you to, I just want to put this into context, okay? Craig Anderson was 41 last year, okay? These are his numbers, okay? He was, he was 11 and 11, is that right? 11 11. 306 goals against average, 908 save percentage. And there were lots of players that played for the boss for the Buffalo Sabres as well. Uko Pekalukanen was one of them. There was a, a, a window of goalies. And look, are the Buffalo Sabres a great defensive hockey team? No. Are they improved? I believe so. Couple of things here. A, if my expectation is that Patrick Kane signs with the boss with the Buffalo Sabres. That's my belief. I think that fit is there for him. I really do. Right? He's he's a New York kid, if I'm not mistaken. Welcome home, you know? Two, like Ross Mustaline, Owen Powers is now the second year. So like I don't know if he breaks out, but he's going to be better defensively. And I think that brings a really good stability to that team. The whole forward team is one year older. They're one year better. I And if this team is close at the deadline, they're going to add pieces and they're going to be that much better. Devin Levi was a forgotten man coming into this year. But you like you could not name the two goalies before him without having to look him up. I know because I had to look him up. So 
in my mind, this is Devin Levi's starting role to lose. And I think that number, here's the thing, right? Because a lot of books have the Sabres at like 90 some odd points, right? Which is flirting with a playoff spot. So you're telling me this is a playoff team, but Devin Levi is not going to, oh my God, hold on. I got to mute this. I got a group chat going off because obviously I do. There we go. Okay. Until I turn back on. There we go. So a hundred percent, like uh, two things here, either your number on the Sabres is wrong, in which case you should bet the under or your number on Levi is wrong and you should bet the over. So that's where I'm going with this. I'm going to bet the over on Devin Levi's 24 and a half wins. I don't know if he's a 30 game winner. Okay. I think it's tough, but here's what I will say. This is his job to lose. And I understand the risks with being a rookie goalie in the NHL. It is tough. Okay. There are future hall of famers that had, you know, not really those great first seasons. I'm talking about guys like Mark Andre Fleury. I'm talking about guys like Carey Price, where there was a struggle. I do think that Devin Levi's coming into a much better situation here, right? Because like Mark Andre Fleury was on a really bad Pittsburgh Penguins team, right? Carey Price came in on a bad Montreal Canadiens team. Devin Levi's not coming into a terrible Sabres team. This team is good. So I don't think he has to go above and beyond in order to win games. I think he can suffer, even if he suffers from the Martin Jones effect, which is the numbers on the outside, the goal saved average, the save percentage, goal saved above expected are not great, right? He could still pick up wins because the team will win. So to me, that's what I'm banking on here. I'm banking on him getting the role right out of the gate. At first, people thought, he may not be the starting goalie. This is your starting goalie night one. It's Devin Levi. And I don't think it's a split here. I'm, I don't think we're seeing like a 50-50 split. I think he runs with the job. At some point, he's going to take over. There might be a learning curve, but I think 24 and a half is just too low. Not in this Not in this category. It's too low for me. For, for a team that has playoff expe expectations, it's too low. It's too low. So I'm going to handle, I'm going to hammer the over here I, I can't look back. Uh, we got one more here. We're going to go on a lower. We're going to go with Freddie Anderson. And for me, the under here for Freddie Anderson is real simple. I don't think he stays healthy. And if I'm looking at here, I'm going to pull him up here on daily. On daily face off, which is where you can get all your information, obviously. Uh, daily face off. I'm going to go here. The starting goalies and, and the crease... In, in, in Carolina is just like, it's full, okay? I do think for a second that anti Ranta, like he's also injury prone. And then they have that, who's he, Russian? I can't even pronounce his name, like Co something, right? Patriots, I don't know. I can't even say it. Anyways, they have a three-headed monster there, okay? So which means you don't have to roll out Freddie Anderson every night, right? I think there could be a closer 50-50 split here for Freddie Anderson, which means, uh, let's say in an ideal world, he doesn't get hurt, okay? But he plays a 50-50 split in game. So he plays about 41, 41 to 45. You're telling me he's going to win 30 of those 45 games? That's a stretch. That's a stretch, fan. Here's how much I know it's a stretch, okay? Uh, and Dersen. Freddie Anderson now, A, by the way, he's getting up there. He's 34. We know he's dealt with his fair shares of injuries, okay? We know that. He played 34 games last season total. He did pretty well. I understand that, okay? 21, 11, and 1, okay? 2.48 goals against average, 903 save percentage. So the goals against average is good because he's on a good team. The save percentage, to me, 903, is wave A below his career average, which is nine, which is nine fifteen, and that means that he wasn't facing many shots, but he was also allowing goals. Again, he's thirty four. Okay, he's getting up there. The lower bodies for goalies hurt. The hip flexors, the knees, the all that stuff. I do not believe for a second 
that he is going to stay healthy. I don't. I can't. And I don't see the Carolina Hurricanes just trotting him out there. I do think that if they kind of get maybe a lead or if they're in a comfortable spot where they don't really have to fight for a playoff spot, then he's not going to play a ton down the stretch. Right? And to me, I, I'm, I would never wish an injury on anybody. Not a player ever. But I, I could see a situation where like something happens to a knee and he's out for like a decent like two months or something. And that would really hinder his play. He played 34 games, right? He played 52 the year before, right? He played 52 the year before his first year in Carolina, 217 uh, goals against average, 922 save percentage. Those are good numbers. I don't think that's the Freddy we're going to see anymore. I don't. I would love to see Freddie Anderson do well. I would love it. I don't think he will. I don't think he will. So that's where I'm sitting on this. I don't. I, these are my five. These are my five. You can pick your five. If you want to roll with this, you go ahead and you do so. Brad Marchand, we're taking the under 70 and a half points over 30 and a half goals on Connor Bedard over 32 and a half on Cole Caulfield over 24 and a half wins on Devin Levi lower 30 and a half wins for Freddie Anderson. Uh, let's see what we got here. Let's place uh, how much are we going to do 10, 10 pays 200. So if I get all five, right by the end of the year, I collect a nice little 200 bucks out of it. We'll submit. Boom. There we go. First official underdogs picks on stream. Give you this honestly round of applause. Look at this. It's beautiful. I love it. I think it is great. We'll see, you know, we'll see how it goes. This is what I'm going to roll with because I, I truly believe that it is a, a, a good base. I enjoy this base. I think this is pretty good. All right. Uh, so that is that I am going to pull this down here. I'm going to go let my.